Hello, this is Mary Lynn Van Sweeten with Partners in Technology. I will be showing you the information that is available in Customer Maintenance Data Entry. We will be looking at Sage 100C version 2017. The customer information is organized under eight different tabs. I've always liked how Sage keeps the screens organized and easy to read. On tab one, we see the customer's billing address. We are going to see also the defaults that are used for producing invoices, such as terms codes, tax schedules, salespersons. Perhaps we even need to have credit limits to, so that we know if we want to continue processing orders for this customer. If I move on to the additional tab, I have additional information stored here, such as credit cards. In my example, I don't have credit cards, but I could store multiple credit cards. In my data entry area, I can put in my price level, which would impact or can impact the pricing that occurs when I'm producing a sales order, whether or not I allow a discount rate uh, if I'm charging a finance charge. I have a customer status. I can make the customer, keep the customer active. I can make him inactive or temporary. If I change the customer to inactive, I also have the opportunity to enter an act inactive reason code. I'm going to move over to tab three, which is statistics. Some handy statistics here, a little aging, last payment, highest balance, uh, average days overdue, date established, and date of last activity, and a few other things. Moving to the summary tab, I rather like this screen. This gives me a little summary of my sales, cost of sales, profit, cash, and number of invoices, period to date, year to date, and prior year. Now the important thing is I can come over here to the selection area and I can change the focus so I can have any period and any year. Moving on to the history tab, this is one of my favorites. I'm uh, focusing, I'm going to focus on a year 2020 and I could see that I, in my trend for this customer, I have sales in both April and May. Now I can change the focus here by using this little icon and I'm switching the view and now I see the sales and sales um, of the prior year rather than just sales and cost of sales. I also have a little widget over here. This handy little widget allows me to fix my data should that be a requirement. Now most users won't have access to this so they won't even see the icon. This is defined in role maintenance. Let's move on to tab 6 and invoices. There's a lot going on on this screen. First of all, I'm going to see all the invoices that are in the open invoice file. And I know what you're saying. Well, why are there balances of zero on some of these invoices? Invoices that have been paid stay in the open invoice file until the retention period has been exceeded that is set up in accounts receivable options. Then during period end processing, those invoices would be purged from only the open invoice file. They're still going to be in the history file, so you are not going to lose your data. If I click on an invoice, you could see down in the secondary grid that I could see the payment information or was there a credit memo, was there an adjustment? I would see all the reasons why an invoice is now has a balance, something other than the amount of the invoice. Clicking on another one, you could see I have a credit memo for this one as well as a payment, so it's a little bit different. Each one is going to show the information that is um, appropriate for that invoice. And I can also drill into the invoice. There's a number of important things in here. Here's the header information of the invoice. But I can also go to the Lines tab and I can see everything that was invoiced for um, this, um, on this particular invoice, each item. I'm seeing the journal entry that was posted to General Ledger, and if I click on this little printer icon, I can reprint the invoice. Now, there's some handy icons over to the side. We looked at the second one, but I'm going to go to this first one. In this first one, perhaps I only want to see invoices with a balance, uh, with a balance due. By unchecking that box, 
Now I only see my balance due items. Coming back here, I can turn it back on or I can make selections based on is this a finance charge invoice, a debit memo, and I can uh, drill into the areas that um, are necessary for my search. And I also have a number of filter areas here. Something handy is the invoice date or perhaps an invoice uh, number range. Moving on down, if I come over here, I can print an aged invoice report. When I launch this, it already has my customer number uh, selected, and I can make any changes that I want to, um, just like running a standard aged report. My next icon down, I can print a statement for this customer. Perhaps I'm talking with this statement. If I preview this st uh, statement, I'm going to be able to see the, um, the statement for this particular customer. And using my export, I can export it to an email client and then send it directly to my customer from here. The last one is if I have saved any of these invoices to Paperless Office. I just click on this, I'm going to see a list. As you can see in my sample here, I have not been saving invoices to Paperless Office. Let's move on to transactions. Here I see invoices, payments, credit memos, but it's laid out in a little different fashion. Of course, on this, I can uh, click on any of these columns to sort them in the way that I need. And you'll notice that I have similar icons here, something that I can put filters in, where I can print an aging report, where I can put, print a customer statement. Finally, let's move over to the sales order tab. Sales order tab here is going to show me all the open sales orders for this client. I can click on any of these and drill into it and take a peek at it. I can modify it if I need to, or I can even delete it if I need to. If I've stored it in Paperless Office, I'd be able to click on this and see it in Paperless Office. Now there's one thing that isn't very apparent here. I happen to have on this customer a repeating order. Those don't show up by default, so I need to click on my little search icon. Then you'll see here that now I would be able to get master orders and repeating orders. If I click on this, you can now see that I have a repeating order. There are other features available in customer maintenance that are very useful. They're going to be found under the More button or under uh, the Notes icon, but those are for another video. Thanks for watching.